be agreed to. I call the member for Dawson. Well, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I'd uh, ask the uh, member for Kennedy to uh, stick around because I want to respond. Well, he's not sticking around, but I do want to respond to some of the things that he has said. Um, the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Green Zone uh, system, when it was introduced, I was actually working for a member of parliament, the former member for Dawson, Deanne Kelly. And Deanne remained inside the tent with the coalition, uh, and we fought that long and hard. I was one of her key advisers, and it was done by regulation. It wasn't done by legislation. But I've got to tell you that I was one of the people that actually went and saw the fishermen saw the heartache that this great betrayal uh, of the farmers of the sea and saw the heartache that that was causing them. And I've got to tell you, it tore you to pieces. Uh, blokes whose uh, livelihoods for generations had depended on farming the sea, fishing, destroyed by the stroke of a pen, with little real consultation, with little real consultation, with little real science. What it was was a push from an overseas organisation called Pew uh, dictating to Australia. And it's to my great shame, as a member of the National Party, that it was the National Party in coalition that actually allowed that to happen. But we were fighting against it. We were fighting against it, make no mistake. Uh, but there was no convincing the environment ministers at the time. Now we are faced with the same situation once again where more uh, of our marine uh, area is going to be locked up and fishermen locked out. Recreational fishermen, commercial fishermen. Now, the member for Clare and the member for Paterson have both spoken uh, on this bill and spoken uh, very well, outlining a number of facts. But I've got to tell you that there is no doubt in my mind that these marine parks and certainly the management plans associated with them need to be disallowed. We don't have the opportunity to disallow the marine parks themselves, quite unfortunately. But the people in this place, the representatives of the Australian people, should have that say. Unfortunately, we do not. So we are resorting to disallowing the management plans here, the things that will give, I suppose, the marine parks the teeth. Now, these uh, management plans, uh, indeed the whole marine parks that this government has uh, imposed, are opposed by just about every representative, recreational and professional fishing organisation in Australia. The Australian Recreational Fishing Foundation, the Australian Marine Alliance, the Commonwealth Fisheries Association, Sunfish, Tuna West, the Australian Fishing Trade Association, uh, Recfish, the Australian uh, Sport Fishing Association, the Game Fishing Association of Australia. I could go on and on and on with names of representative organisations in the recreational and professional fishing game that are against this marine park proposal. You name it, when it comes to fishing, they are against it. And they are against it because of what is actually in these, uh, in, in these uh, uh, management plans. Now, let's have a look at what this marine park proposal will do. It effectively locks up one and a half million square kilometres of marine environment around this nation. There is no scientific integrity at all with this process. Uh, the science was kept secret, secret from the industry, secret from recreational fishermen when they wanted to see it. It was kept secret for way too long. And the science was not real science. It was based on political horse trading horse trading with the coalition partners of the Gillard Labor government, the Greens. Order. The member for Dawson has the call. Thank you. Heard in silence. Now, this is going to result in lost revenue for, for fishing industries and fishing businesses right around the country. There is at least 60 regional communities that this will impact upon right around the nation. Uh, there will be, uh, it's estimated by the Australian Marine Alliance, a 6 per cent gross downgrade in local government revenue as a result. There will be thousands of jobs lost as a result of this fishing lockout. There will be 70 to 80 trawl operators displaced uh, and an increase of probably $1.5 billion in seafood 
uh, in, in seafood imports into this country. Now, we already import 70 per cent of our seafood uh, into this country. That figure will increase. It will probably be at 80 per cent within a few years of this uh, marine park coming into effect. We have the southern eastern scale fishery threatened as a direct, direct result of this. Uh, we've wiped out uh, basically a $2 billion uh, commercial aquaculture industry. Uh, we've got the eastern tuna and billfish th fishery threatened. We've got $12 million displaced in Jarvis Bay, $58.2 million in management costs for closures uh, around the country. We've got compensation. Uh, the, the minister and the government says is around $100 million, but I've got to tell you the industry is saying it could be closer to half a billion dollars. So these are all of the problems. And one of the big things that I am worried about is the complete closure, the complete closure of the Coral Sea, the complete closure of the Coral Sea to any form of fishing. Now this is ridiculous. This is clearly ridiculous. It is not untrue. It is, the Coral Sea is effectively call and we'll closed down silence. to commercial fishing. Well, you shake your head, Minister. You shake your head, Minister, but it's in your plan. Your plan closes down fishing right around this country, and the Coral Sea is straight and front and centre of that uh, of that closure. Now, you have the Minister has treated the industry and the recreational fishermen with absolute contempt. Contempt because there has not been genuine consultation in his approach. Now, uh, the member for Clare has talked about 30 days uh, uh, consultation when the industry begged the minister, begged the minister to give them at least 90 days consultation. Now, he goes on about, so the minister goes on about, uh, uh, and I've seen him before, come in with a bundle of books, with a bundle of books pretending this is the science, this is the science behind it. Look at this bundle of books. Well, I've got to tell you there's one simple question to prove that there is little science behind this at all. And that simple question is, uh, what is the conservation value? What is the conservation value of the places that you are locking up? Now I have not heard what the conservation value is. There's another question as well. What is the threat? What is the threat that's imposed upon the biological diversity in the area that you are locking up? Now the threat simply cannot be recreational fishermen. It's hardly likely to be commercial fishermen as well. Now we've heard the, um, the minister you know, always gets up and has a bit of a belly laugh about, oh, you can't take a tinny off the coast that far. Oh, oh, oh. You know, we'll actually come down to uh, the Mackay Marina and have a look at some of the boats that are there. I can tell you they go pretty far off the coast. Some of them go out to Marion Reef, uh, which is also being locked up. Now, the Keep Australia fishing movement um, have been out there campaigning very strongly against uh, this proposal. Um, they say that—and uh, I'm going to quote them at length here—the proposed marine parks start three nautical miles out to sea and extend to the limit of Australia's 200-mile exclusive economic zone. It's true to say that many of these areas are a fair distance offshore, but the fact is it doesn't matter where the zones are. The main point is that these anti-fishing lockouts are discriminatory, unfair, and they're not necessary. Many of the proponents of these lockout zones go to great lengths to say that these zones, especially those in the Coral Sea in northern Queensland, are too far out to be of interest to the average angler. But then they talk about these areas as being fantastic locations for recreational divers and other tourists to visit. If these places are within the range of divers and other groups, then surely it's reasonable to expect that anglers also have the ability to access these areas. The fact is anglers can and do travel big distances offshore in their own vessels and with charter operations, just like recreational divers and other marine tourists. The argument that the marine parks are too far offshore just doesn't stack up. And I've got to say it doesn't. And I've got to say you can't have it both ways. If there's no fishing out there, if you know, there's no tinnies going out there, as the minister says, and no fishing happening out there, then what is the threat? Why are we locking these areas up? It just simply does not make sense. The fact is though there, there is fishing that's happening out there, but it is not a threat to these areas. It is not a threat. And um, one of those operations that actually goes out there is nomad sports fishing. And nomad sports fishing uh, takes boats out of Mackay and they go out to Marion Reef 
again one of those areas that's going to be locked up under this proposal. And uh, Marion Reef, one of the people who run it, is a fellow by the name of Damon Olson. And Damon uh, has got an interesting thing up on his uh, on the Nomad Sports Fishing website. Uh, a letter here to uh, all of his customers. Uh, he takes them out there on these recreational fishing trips, and. Um, he says, I've been in Canberra, Canberra recently and been to meetings with the Federal Environment Minister, Tony Burke, and had a significant involvement in this process so far. The previous letter that everyone sent to the minister through the Nomad Sports Fishing website made this meeting possible and made the government realise that this is a serious issue for recreational anglers. He goes on to say, all we want to achieve here is to ensure that our marine reserves are implemented with thorough scientific planning, scientific principles and practical outcomes that work for all user groups. All recreational fishing groups support closed-off areas, but only when thorough scientific processes have shown that these closed-off areas are required. The current process is closing, closing off huge areas to recreational fishermen simply so the government can keep green groups happy and stay in power. The massive problem that we face here is that the science has long ago been abandoned by the politicians and are now playing a game of drawing colours on maps simply to keep the powerful and well-funded green lobby groups at bay. Now, when I read that lines on maps, I thought, oh, he's being a, bit, uh, being a bit metaphorical there, but no, he's actually being literal. Listen to this. I have the first-hand example of this from the meeting with the Federal Environment Minister. The current process is proposing to close off the main area of the Perth Trench to all game fishing activities, essentially shutting down the entire game fishing industry and community in Perth. We asked the minister why this zone had been placed in its proposed position. We were told that the minister drew that zone himself because they needed one in that area, and there was no information to tell him where to put it, so he just placed it where he thought was appropriate. That is great science. Fantastic science. Science by texter. Science by texter. We'll get a whiteboard out in the map and we'll just circle an area and say that's what we need to lock up. How ridiculous. How ridiculous. So, you know, all the books can be brought in that you want, but here's something that was said uh, to a recreational fishing uh, business. And uh, you know uh, the minister has to uh, has to uh, answer for that for that uh, to that allegation because it's quite damning. It is quite damning. Now uh, we have got a major impact that's been spoken of before uh, by the member for Clare and the member for Paterson uh, on our uh, domestic commercial uh, fishing industry, and certainly they are going to feel the squeeze here. They are really going to feel the squeeze uh, with this. Um, but we're removing all of, the, all of their effort. We're removing all of their effort, protecting uh, you know, these marine parks uh, from the recreational fishermen, from the commercial fishermen. And the minister raised the prospect earlier today of, oh, you know, if we do this, we could have oil rigs suddenly pop up there. You know, apart from the fact that actually there's a process that that's going to go through, uh, you know, if we pass this tonight, they're not going to simply going to set up tomorrow. They're not going to set up at all because there's processes that they have to go through. The environmental protection and biodiversity conservation process is actually one of those. So, uh, what is actually being stopped in this area? Well, I've got to tell you, it's not recreational diving, it's not tourists, it's not pleasure boats, it's not commercial shipping. Uh, not even naval vessels will be uh, will be um, uh, excluded from the zone. Uh, and you know, a huge oil tanker could actually go through some of these zones. There is no restriction on that sort of stuff. Uh, there is no restriction on that stuff. There is a restriction on the fishermen. There is a restriction on the commercial fishermen. There is a restriction on the recreational fishermen. It is basically demonising an Australian pastime, demonising a pastime, saying that this is wrong, this is harmful to the environment. But there is no proof of that. There is no proof of that. Now, I sit on the House's Standing Committee for Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry. And I have heard the testimony from the government-funded Fisheries Research Development Corporation, and they have actually said that our fisheries, our commercial fisheries here in Australia, are sustainable. They are sustainable. There is no unsustainable practices taking place. That is what the Fisheries RDC says. The Fisheries RDC that this government helps fund. So we have policy, government policy at loggerheads here. Policy on one hand that we've got before us saying uh, that you know there is a threat posed uh, from fishing to the environment, to the marine environment, but on the other hand, the people who actually know, the guys doing the research saying that there's not. I've got to say 
This uh, disallowance should actually be passed by the House. We need to knock this off the agenda and let people just get on fishing the pastime that they enjoy. The member's time has expired. I thank the member for Dawson.